COVID killed almost 6.7 million people, forced strict mandatory rules on where you could be, and revamped stereotypes against people and vaccines. The mass lockdown made us rethink our perspectives on viruses, so much so that social scientists even wrote papers on the fear of COVID. But would you believe it if I had told you that COVID was nothing special? Here is Matthew Moore, a professor who deals with virology and its impacts. But virus is essentially uh, just a nucleic acid that's, that's packaged in a specific uh, either set of, of proteins and possibly lipids. Uh, and, and basically what that serves as is a delivery vehicle for whatever host cell this virus targets to get that genetic information there so it can replicate and produce more of itself. Viruses in their most simple form are just floating shapes filled with RNA and DNA. For example, we can take the most familiar virus of all, the flu. The flu is a virus, but is it alive or dead? Many biologists have debated over this idea, and there is still no general consensus. But here's Matthew Moore on the topic. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily an organism because it doesn't have metabolism. It doesn't necessarily require nutrition. It just requires a host cell that it actually hijacks and then uses the resources of the host cell. Like the flu, COVID is an envelope virus. It has a casing that essentially determines how stable it can be in an environment. COVID and the flu share many similar characteristics as viruses. For one, they are both respiratory viruses. But where did these viruses come from? On social media, people claim that COVID was manufactured. Conspiracy theorists pointed to China and health officials. They even had a name for this accusation, and they called it the lab leak. In the city where the virus originated, Wuhan, scientists pinpointed the start of COVID on the Huanan seafood market, where bats were being sold. Near the location of the Huanan seafood market was the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Combined with an influx of suspicion and coincidence, many sought to investigate the possibility of a manufactured virus. Even Joe Biden doubled on the investigation of the theory. For many people, it is difficult to understand how a virus can actually be created, and therefore it makes it more plausible to see that COVID was manufactured and not created by nature. Viruses replicate incredibly quickly, and therefore can go through the process of natural selection and diversity much quicker than any other organism. Viruses can essentially grow into more dangerous ones, just like how some strains of the flu branched off into strains of COVID. COVID is nothing special. It is just another strand of the flu. But not everyone realized this. Especially here in the US, many began pointing fingers and accusing the US government of becoming totalitarian. Some even filed lawsuits against the government. COVID served as a wake up call for the entire country. Just how far can a quote-unquote, democratic and liberal government founded on free speech limit freedom in order to save lives. The mask mandate, for one, led to many protests, but it saved many lives. But some virologists and health officials say it varies on these mask mandates. The biggest problem is that here in America, free speech may override the necessity to distribute correct information. The mask myth was one of many, which said that masks were essentially useless, but many scientists disproved this notion. There were bigger myths to come. A prevalent one that is still common today is the vaccine myth. You know, in the advent of vaccines that really reduce the severity of the disease as well as antivirals that seem to work pretty well, um, the question is how much do we need these measures? Do we need to do it to the same degree that we did prior to having the vaccine? And that's a public health question where you are sort of balancing cultural and societal needs and preferences with reducing the risk of infection. In the height of COVID, restaurants, colleges, and high schools required students or customers to be vaccinated, though not everyone wanted to comply. Some believed that the U.S. was forcing them against their constitutional will, and others had religious reasons and some didn't even have vaccines available. 
The biggest problem with the vaccine myth is that people believe vaccines should prevent any sort of transmission. But because viruses can adapt and vaccines are not always meant to be fully 100% effective, there is a growing distrust in vaccine efficacy. Suspicion of vaccines have been going on long before COVID, but it was not until COVID that being vaccinated or not could literally mean the death of another person. I think the myths about how it affects your health or how it's unproven, I just, I, I, I don't think it's constructive. I know it's been a thing that even existed before the pandemic. There've been a lot of sort of uh, a number of you know, vaccine skeptics. 